Hello friends, James Stevenson, back with part two in my three-part series on Stevenson Indicator. If you haven't seen the first one, which goes into the history and background, hey, what is this Stevenson Indicator? Where did it come from in the first place? Is this a joke? Yes, kind of. It's kind of a joke, uh, as technical analysis is. In my opinion, there are people who uh, put a lot more stock in technical analysis than I do. Uh, so in part two, what I'm going to talk about is something that I did very recently, which is um, create a Google Sheet uh, under Google Docs online so that there's a live Stevenson indicator up uh, on, a, on a website for you to view uh, whenever you would like. So people had suggested that to me before, and I thought that was a pretty good idea. So let's bring up something. Let's bring up uh, this Google Doc. So uh, this is something that I've been learning recently. I know a lot of people out there have been using this for a long time and are really good at it. But anybody can just go use their Google account to set up a Google Sheet. And then all you have to do is drop this formula right here into cell A1 at the top of a blank sheet and hit enter. And this stuff will populate. So columns A through F here. Because uh, it's going to automatically go query this stock ticker for uh, all the information that you see here that's available in, in this query, Google Finance query for this date range. So you put the dates in quotes that you want. Uh, Tesla didn't start trading until June 29th of 2010. So when I ask it for January 1st of 2010, it just starts with the first date trading was happening at an open of $3.80, split adjusted, uh, and uh, a high of $5 and a low of $3.51. That would have been a pretty good deal if you had gotten in just above three bucks, 50 cents split adjusted on Tesla. You'd be real happy with your investment. Okay, so this is your basic stock info, open, high, low, close volume. And then after that, I just wanted to do a little um, cleanup on the date format from this one that has the time shown on it. I wanted it to be a little cleaner looking than that. So I put in a date code uh, using a text formula here that rounds this off and gets rid of the time decimal portion of it. And then I put, I put a counter on it. How many trading days have there been since the beginning that I can use to make my Stevenson indicator logic over here? So uh, you don't get a Stevenson indicator until it's March 18th, 2020. Why that date? because uh, as we saw in the previous video, that's the lowest price at which Tesla has traded since 2019. That's when the Stevenson indicator begins. And I had to put in some logic here that says, hey, if we are running the Stevenson indicator now, add $1.69 to the previous day's Stevenson indicator. Uh, but if we're not, then it's uh, zero for Stevenson indicator so far. Then, in order to make my chart, which is these white vertical lines that are either above or below, usually above, uh, because Tesla usually trades at a premium above students and indicator, um, how do I write the logic for that? Well, it's up publicly, so you can go see it, try it out, uh, check it out, see if you like it. There were actually a few times prior to March 18th uh, 2020, when Tesla had traded above $72.24 pre-split. So I had to make this logic work either way. There might be a really easy way of doing this. I, uh, <laughs> so sometimes I, I do something the hard way and then discover, oh, there was an easier way to write these formulas, but this is how I wrote them and they work. And then I just got an indicator over here that tells me whether uh, it's above or below uh, I was using this for some Tableau project that I was working on where this was useful. 
as a parameter for coloring the chart, either white or blue. Blue so it would fade into the background and not be seen. All right, uh, so what do I get with this? I get the ability to make this chart. Um, so here is, let me make this a lot bigger so it fills the screen better for you. Um, I, I labeled this x-axis where the dates are 318, 2020 through the present. And uh, that's what the data range is. So the x-axis is starting with row 2448, meaning the 2447th date that Tesla was traded publicly, which was March 18th, 2020, up through the current date. And I've got the corresponding Stevenson indicator base. And um, what do they call the other one? The bar height. Yeah. So for each of these dates, what you can do on this live website is hover over um, any of these white bars to see what the premium was versus Stevenson indicator on that date. So on January 15th, 2021, the stock was trading $399 above the Stevenson indicator, which was $427.14 at the time. So you can see for any date what those amounts are. You see the legend is on there. So you're hovered over a blue bar. You can't see it, but it's there. Uh, $604.59. And then above that, you see a little white bar uh, showing you that the stock closed $17.03 higher. And I've got uh, a header at the top here. This is a little different from the one that I've been tweeting out from Excel. $72.24 closing price on March 18th, plus $1.69 per trading day since with the vertical lines showing you the variance between the actual closing price and the Stevenson indicator. So what this is useful for is for anybody who wants to just see how Stevenson indicator is looking today. Uh, I know some people are actually making trading decisions based on this. That is not my recommendation. I don't offer trading advice. I just put out for entertainment purposes only. Um, this uh, and all my other charts and uh, earnings on Twitter. If you don't follow me there already, you can follow me at I cannot underscore enough. What is it that I cannot underscore enough? Uh, uh, I cannot underscore enough how glad I am that I purchased uh, Tesla stock back in 2014 through 2018, 2019. I've been buying some since as well. Uh, so what else do I want to tell you about this Google Sheet? Maybe I just want to bring up Twitter and show you that I've already got uh, part one to this series. You can see that tweet. I'll leave that link in the video description. And there's a link as well to this uh, Google Doc. Anything else? Oh, yes. Uh, I will be back. I'll be back in uh, part three of this series to talk about why the Stevenson indicator has been uh, a pretty good technical support line for Tesla over the past couple of years and how that relates to earnings growth expectations. So uh, I will see you again in part three. If you've liked this video, click the like button. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, click subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.